there you are, Captain Merrick. Uh, performing another of the onerous duties of best man. <sighs> it's just a hat box. You're a man for detail, I can see, like me. Was it confetti? You are married? No. Neither am I. They say it's significant. Tidy people are always trying to wipe the slate clean. I am sorry about the incident this morning. You will not hurt yourself. Uh, no. Apart from the scratch on Captain Bingham's face, the only damage was to the Nawab's car. Is there something you want, Count Bronowski? Yes. The answer to a question. But the question is uh, impertinent. I hesitate. Please, don't. Well, I have been wondering if you thought, perhaps, that the stone was thrown at you. Why should you wonder that? Well, Mrs. Grace has just told me you were in the Indian police. That's quite true. I'll shoulder the responsibility if it helps you to explain the damage to the Nawab's car. My dear Captain Merrick, you totally misunderstand the reason for my way laying you like this. Yes, well, I realised it wasn't a chance meeting. Quite so. I came to look for you. But surely you are the Merrick who was district superintendent of police in Mayapur last August at the time of the riots and the rape of the English girl, Daphne Manners. How do you arrive at that conclusion? I deduce it. My deduction is correct. You are that officer. I see no reason to deny it. Good. You see, my conversation with Mrs. Grace led to a small gaffe on my part. She mentioned that you had been a DSP in Sundanagar, which I take now to be the district to which you were transferred after the Mayapur affair. Hmm? I was surprised. I said, but surely he was the medic who was DSP in Mayapur at the time of the riots and the rape. I'm afraid she was intrigued. I thought it only fair to have a word with you before you returned. It's a bit of a nuisance. Can't be helped. The notion came to me so very recently. On the way here in the car, I remembered the report I had from Mr. Kasim on Thursday morning. And suddenly it rang a bell. Tell me, does the name Pandit Baba mean anything to you? As a matter of fact, it does. Please tell me what. He's a so-called venerable Hindu scholar who incites his young disciples to acts of violence against Muslims, against us, against anybody the Pandit disapproves of and never gets caught himself. In my poor, I couldn't lay a finger on him. Then you'll be interested to know that Pandit Baba is in Mirat. And you believe he was behind the incident this morning? Oh, I think so, don't you? Not that we should be able to prove it. But he is in touch, my spies believe, with very many people throughout India. <laughs> Aren't you exaggerating? Am I? Was the stone this morning the first evidence you've had that you have been carefully tracked down since leaving Mayapur? To Sundanagar, perhaps. Even Mirat. It may be as you say. It doesn't bother me. This is their last opportunity. They can hardly follow where I'm going. Unless some sepoy has been bribed to put a bullet through my head. I don't think killing you is the idea. As you say, Mirat is their last opportunity. The wedding ceremony would have proved uh, an excellent background for something colourful, but they have given us only a stone. Tell me, did it pass through your mind, I wonder, that acting as best man might bring your persecutors out into the open? Uh, no. It was the other way round. I agreed to be best man and then realised I was probably the worst possible choice. All this is something I prefer to forget. I'm sorry you've identified me. 
Oh, my dear fellow, why? If I have correctly judged Mrs. Grace's reactions to my unintentional disclosure, you are now an object not only of interest, but of admiring curiosity. Huh. We must go back. I shall have to, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to have kept you. If you're ever in Mirat again, I hope you will let me know. We might have a longer chat. Of course. No. We may find much in common. Would you, for example, describe that young man over there as beautiful? Yes, I think I... Hmm? Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs>